damas y caballeros, buenas noches y bienvenido a Auditorio Municipal aquí en Tijuana, Baja California, México, para este la combate de la noche en vivo and the zone. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to T Tijuana, Baja California, Mexico, for the main event of the evening live on the zone. Presentado por Matchroom Boxing USA, Zanfer Promotions in association with Paco Presents. Sanctionado por TV Azteca, y Cerveza Tecate, la cerveza oficial de box. Commission de box Tijuana present. T Presidente Alberto Martinez. And ladies and gentlemen, 10 rounds of international boxing scheduled. Your, th your three judges scoring this contest from ringside, Los Tres Jueces Son, Carlos Flores, Esteban Franco, y Alejandro Rochin. At the sound of the bell, your third man in the ring, referee Fernando Renteria. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the four corners of the world to the four corners of this ring here in Tijuana, Baja California. This is it. The time has come. The fight starts now. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, he wears white with a red stripe. He scaled at 146.4 pounds. His professional record, 68 victories, nine defeats, two draws. He has 37 big wins coming by way of knockout. He is the former two division, three time champion of the world, De Los Mochi Sinaloa, y representando Tijuana, Baja California, La Zorrita. Humberto Soto! Soto! And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. He wears white with the maroon stripe. He scaled 151.8 pounds. His professional record, 35 victories against four defeats. He has one bout even and 26 big wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Oxnard, California. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the exciting and hard hitting former WBA lightweight champion of the world, Brandon Bam Bam Rios. Rios. So you talk about meeting later in life. These guys were champions at 135 pounds and now fighting over the 150 pound marker. Now they're both trying to stay in the game. And Rios is a volume puncher. In his last five fights, he has thrown more, but his opponents have connected more. Rios comes off a win over Canelo's brother. In his last effort in Mulvane, Kansas in November. Left hook and a right hand by Rios. Soto will come flailing at him. Hooked by Rios. It's Soto's crowd. He's a little older, 38. Good right hand by Soto. Rios about a nine to one favorite. 
where betting is legal. And Soto a five to one underdog. Reason for those numbers is when they don't feel like they have a lot of action on the fight, then there's a spread. These are pretty much known as two action guys. 37 knockouts for Soto. 26 for Rios. Good left hand by Soto. Combined, they had four lightweight belts back in the day. Now the question is, what's happening on this day? Rios on the stalk now against Soto. One thing about these guys, probably won't see a lot of defensive excellence. Soto's fans naturally chanting for him in Tijuana. Right hand by Rios just bounces right off the jaw. First round will come to a close. Good action here. from Rios and the answer by Soto. We did not expect much defense. We didn't get it. But what we do like is they came out firing in that opening round. We start round two, scheduled for 12 an hour main event. Brandon Rios, 35, four and one with 26 knockouts. Humberto Soto, 68, nine and two, 37 knockouts. I'm Dave Bontempo. Glad you're with us as these two former champions come up a couple of weight classes a few years later. And they're going to put on an entertaining scrap. Good shots here by Soto. Rios back with the left hook. Nice right hand by Rios on the button. type of fight will be a fan's delight because all action guys teeing up going for big shots Rios as I mentioned in the last five fights his opponents have landed more punches than he has but he's thrown a lot so here we go Guys are emptying the tank in round two. Good shots here by Soto. Nice uppercut. A good right hand by Soto. Okay. 
Shots just bounce off. Soto trying to invest in the body here. And Soto acquitting himself well, even while he's up against the ropes. Rios after the right hand of the body. A little Rios exchange. And Soto right back. Final seconds of round two. Some good action from round two. As Soto on the attack and then Rios on the attack. And look at the power each one generates. Humberto Soto, Brandon Rios. As we start round three, talked about Rios and fighting at a lower weight class. Before he lost to Tim Bradley, he had to lose 53 pounds. He had roadblocks, retired. He came back and it looked good in the last win against Canelo's brother. Excellent fights against Mike Alvarado. Lost to Pacquiao, Bradley. And of course, he beat Ramon Alvarez in November. Soto has fought the likes of Lucas Batisse, Jesus Chavez, Kevin Kelly. Soto fighting fairly well, countering. And Rios is on the attack. Clubbing right hand by Soto. Rios gets right in his chest. Look at the quality of the shots that land. Soto fighting well off the ropes. When each guy looks at this, he'll say, I won the round. Quality of these shots. I throw, you throw. Take turns. What may separate in the eyes of the judges is the pressure being applied by Rios. That could be the tiebreak.
that we are getting the entertaining fight we expected as round three heads into the night. your pick from what you like in the last round. Do you like the countering of Soto? As we see it there. Or do you like the pressure of Rios? And we start round four. Brandon Rios, Humberto Soto. Crowd really getting into it. In Tijuana, I'm Dave Bontempo. It's two former champions trying to bring back some blasts from their past. by Soto. Good right hand to the head by Soto. Another good hook. Nice chopping hook by Soto. These guys are not cheated with their punch output. And the quality of their offense is strong. Rio set a copy box record against Alvarez with 108 power punches attempted in a single round, of which he landed 53. Power in that respect is anything other than a jab. They just set up shop on each other's chest and go to work. Nice body shots here by Soto. He turns southpaw, then comes back. Good exchanges. Uppercut by Rios. Anybody for a jab? We don't need no stinking jab. These guys go right at it. Load up the power shots. Headbutts. Positioning. Good shots from Soto. Good round for him. Nice right hand by Soto, but he's very effective fighting off the ropes and countering 
in that last round. While they each landed good quality shots, I think the better ones were his. All right, so we start round five. It's been a great one to watch. Humberto Soto and Brandon Rios. High volume. High quality of punches landed like that uppercut by Soto. Rios is right back on him. Rios, uh, literally a big boxing man all the way. He has three daughters, uh, Layla, and Mia, and Ava, and he named them after fighters. Layla Ali, Mia St. John, and Ava Knight. He's also got a son, Marcos, who he named after the baby-faced assassin, Marco Antonio Barrera. Rios hoping that Soto will show his age. of 38. Some very good punch output and pace for a 38-year-old fighter that we've seen from Soto so far. Nice hook by Rios. Whistling right hand by Rios. Rios advancing. Soto countering. Some shoeshine stuff trying to steal the round. Some strategy coming to the corner of Soto, saying that all he's going to do is show you the last 10 seconds now. Pretty much telling Rios that I think his margin of error has expired here. They don't like seeing him try to rally on the road like this. And we continue on. Brandon Rios and Humberto Soto. Let's see if Rios responds to what his corner told him. They got the impression that Soto 
is going to try and steal rounds at the very end. And they felt that Rios could put the pressure on earlier. Nice hook by Rios. Good hook returned by Soto. Three good shots by Soto. Rios in tight. We've got our phone booth warfare. You can fight this in a phone booth. That's how tight these guys are. And even though phone booths themselves may be obsolete, the term still has meaning in the boxing world. The two guys who get right up in each other's face. No room. Left hook by Rios. Good hook and a body shot here. Uppercut by Rios. Now pressuring the jab. Three shots back from Soto. Will be an interesting dilemma for the judges because Rios is on the attack. And Soto is countering well. Good hook to the body here by Soto. Nice uppercut by Soto. Snapped the head of Rios. And he goes right back to it. Soto closing out strong. From that last round, again, Rios in attack mode and Serto on the counter. Which style do you like the best? That's really what it's going to boil down to for the judges. Now we continue along. Alberto Soto now in the countering mode. Here comes Brandon Rios. Right hand here by Rios and a good left hook. And now Soto immediately sets up camp against the ropes. If you're Rios, you might want to dart in and dart back, make him come to you, and then if he won't come to you, then you attack again to show the judges that he's in a defensive posture. Chant for Soto. 
Garden is very popular in Tijuana. It's that he owns a taxi and bus business. Had some real drama in his life. Uh, before one of his fights, his wife and children were kidnapped. They finally were returned. He did lose the fight that night, but got his family back. Going to get inside a guy's head, that is absolutely one way to do it. Fortunately for him, the story ending was a happy one. And here's Rios now cracking hooks, left hands, and there's more Rios and less Soto at this particular juncture. Double left hook by Rios and the jab. So while Soto has again enjoyed some countering moments, I've seen a lot more Rios in this round. There's the theatrics for Rios. From the last round, there was Rios attacking, and they're saying in his corner, you're letting this guy steal rounds. I would have agreed with that. I don't think he allowed the last round to get away, though. And we headed to round eight. Former champions Brandon Rios and Humberto Soto waging a nice battle in what would be the equivalent of the junior middleweight division, which has a 154 pound limit. They weighed in around the 150 mark or so, and then. I think he should be doing here is trying to demonstrate that Soto is in a counter punching mode. And I think the best way to do that is to step back now and then, try to get Soto to come out. And if Soto does not, then you're painting the picture that Soto doesn't want to fight. Soto being the older fighter at 38, this is doing him a favor to have the fight in close quarters like this. That's a good hook by Rios. Locked the counter and coming back from Soto. by Rios. Nice uppercut by Soto. 
And that energized him here. Three by Soto. Rio says, no, you don't. These guys are showing they still have offensive marksmanship left. You see how gassed Soto is as he's trying to win on his intelligence here. Still has a lot of pop in those shots. Rios was attacking in the last round. Just when he thought he had Soto figured out, with all this good work, Soto did unload an uppercut and changed the tenor of the round. So we head into round nine, and Rios comes jumping off the stool with Soto reluctant. That sends a message to Rios about how tired Humberto Soto is. I'm Dave Bontempo. You're watching Soto and Rios. Entertaining fight coming from Tijuana, the home area of Soto, who's a big underdog in the fight, fighting very well. Though you sense Rios could be on the verge of wearing him down. He's not only come to Soto's backyard, but he's been right in his face in front of him the entire fight. Now, although Soto has been effective as a counter punching. Stylistically, he's waging the most difficult style to win a fight. When you're a counter puncher, you have little room for error. And that said, this is the way a 38-year-old guy can get through a fight like this. Same strip with Rios attacking. Soto trying to counter. right hand by Soto and a good right hand by Rios and a left hook and a good left hook by Rios again. No easy fights for Rios on the comeback trail. Does something pretty smart there indicating that none of those shots got through as we come to the end of the round. Deep breath, deep, 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 de
three more rounds, all right? Three more rounds to fucking work, all right? We need this three fucking rounds. Rios on the attack mode. We've seen this story. Soto fighting well off the ropes. If you're going to win off the ropes, you must be absolutely exceptional. This is what Soto is trying to do. Into round 10 we go. The home stretch beckons for Brandon Rios and Humberto Soto. They have waged an entertaining war and part time chess match. The chess match part is. Rios forcing Soto back to the ropes. Soto waging much of his fight off the ropes. It's the best way a guy can get through this fight, but it's a tough way to win. Some of those Soto shots were blocked by Rios. Uppercut by Soto comes up shy. Crowd loved it. A lot of it was blocked. Big question will be what the judges think about that. Good right hand by Rios. Soto looks more exhausted of the two. Less than 30 seconds left in round 10. Let's see if Soto resorts to his shoe shine attempts to steal the round, so to speak, which is quick, soft shots designed to score quick points. He goes right into it. Like an alarm clock. Rios put the pressure on. He's doing everything he needed to do in that round. And then the last 10 seconds. All right, so into round 11 we go.
Brandon Rios has been in the attack mode against Humberto Soto. We've seen less coming from Soto over the course of rounds. And while Soto has been doing a good job to hang in there, these are Rios rounds cropping up now. work off the ropes. Just think over the course of a balance of a fight, you can't get a call on the cards with that style. Some rounds we've seen Soto spend two-thirds of the round on the ropes. here by Rios and there's a good hook there too and he's clearly winning this exchange good round for Rios from Rios. And this time, Soto did not come back at him at the end of the round. Fight the final round, and Soto could not even meet Brandon Rios in the middle of the round. That's how tired he is. The 38-year-old has done a great job surviving, but I think the play of this fight has gone to Brandon Rios. It's my opinion, at least. Dave Bontempo with you here. You're watching two champions from a few years back, and a few pounds back. We've gone at it well here tonight. And whereas Soto had an extremely effective counter punching style, 
much of the way. Been a lot of retreat mode in the last three to four rounds. And even the corner of Brandon Rios, which had been concerned that he was giving away too many rounds, looked relaxed for one of the few times in the fight between rounds 11 and 12. Fans have gotten a good bit of entertainment for their money. Sometimes when fighters are long past their glory time, you could get the sense that they're just going through motions. But these guys have come out all heart. And you sure get the idea how nice this fight would have been seven or eight years ago when they both had titles at 135. Still, this has been an entertaining scrap. When Soto was stealing those rounds or trying to, we'd see him explode when he'd hear the 10 second pounding on the canvas. Last round, we did not. Here's the 10 seconds. What's in the tank? Hey, like a, like a track star sprinting for the tape. And it's over. Guys gave everything. Two professionals respecting each other. Damas y caballeros, un aplauso para ambos guerreros. Después dos rounds de acción, vamos a la decisión de los jueces. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we go to the judges' score totals. Carlos Flores, 119 to 111. Alejandro Rochin and Esteban Franco both scored about 118 to 112. All for your winner by unanimous decision, El Ganador con decisión unánime. Humberto Lazorita. Soto! Humberto Soto gets it by a wide margin here. And counter punching off the ropes worked for him.